During that five years, the top 1% or whatever percentage you want to use, you know what I'm talking about here, their salaries increased 31%. And most other salaries increased 0.4%. It went from two to three hundred times. When you think about CEOs versus workers in companies, to four hundred times in 2013. And one example, I think probably this is not news to a lot of you. One example is from Walmart, where a worker gets $8.50 an hour, and the person in charge of the corporation gets $36 million a year. Now, if you took that $36 million, and this is not accurate because $36 million is today, it's not 2008, but if you did take it 2008, and you extended it five years to today, you would be talking about an increase of $12 million in five years for that salary level. And the example from Walmart is not the worst example. Not by far. So don't, this is not anti-Walmart. Um, but it is income inequality. And the point that I'm trying to raise is that I think these are higher stakes about education for our students than people generally realize. Because when the inequities are doing what they're doing, it is happening through tax laws. That's how you get to keep that much. The salaries, yes, go up. But the inequities have to do with tax laws. And those tax laws reflect on the funding in public schools and public colleges. It seems to me what this says is that the students that we try and deal with are entering a phase of history that I don't see any end to, where they are going to be more and more behind, and their children are going to be more and more behind. I'm trying to talk in some classes about this to students, so that as they imagine themselves into a role slightly beyond where they are right now, some of them, some not, they get an appreciation. Because I, I don't think generally when you're 18, 19 that you connect the dots between these figures that you hear and what it means for tax policies everywhere. We know what's happening in major cities across the country right now in public schools. Hundreds of thousands of children with no teacher. Schools closing, huge classes. We know what all that means. I'm trying to say to students, and I'm giving you this information so because I want to reflect on it as a group here, that their education, their communi communication skills, their thinking, their striving, their reading are much more crucial things than they understand because they will have no chance whatsoever to raise a family in the way they wish given the trajectory that is occurring. It will simply get worse. They have come to Middlesex to get help. And they have come to get help that goes beyond test scores. If you listen carefully to students, you'll find out how much they resent those. We, of course, are trying to help them. What I'm trying to suggest is that to help the students today, we need to hear more about something that traditionally has been called social class background. But I think a more constructive word 
is the resources in your home.